Welcome in to the very first cyber show brought to you by Threat Advice and Nexoft. I'm Ben. And I'm Elizabeth. And we are going to bring you the best cyber stories in every episode. And more, so stick around. But we'll start off with the news. This is what we found most fascinating, and we're going to try to translate it in a way that's not overly technical. So I'm going to start with this one. This is not as as big a profile, I guess, as the Colonial uh, Pipeline attack that, that took place a number of weeks back. But it really should be, okay? Because this is what people are calling it, the single biggest global ransomware attack on record. Okay? Wow. And you're like, wait, have I heard of this? Have no, you heard of this? No, I okay. haven't. This company called Kaseya, okay? okay. Kaseya is a software company. They provide software to help um, businesses, small, medium-sized businesses, manage their software updates, um, some of their security things, stuff like that. So they were um, attacked by this Russian-speaking ransomware criminal gang um, called Revil, R-E-V-I-L. Um, if you've seen them before in the news, mm -hmm. they're actually the same guys yeah. that attacked the meat supplier, JBS. Okay, so same guys here. They're in it for the money. This is not um, some sort of like state-sponsored group or anything like that. These guys are in it for the money and they are demanding big, big money this time around. What they did is over 4th of July weekend, I think actually July 2nd, so this is the way that the bad guys operate. They know, because it's 4th of July weekend, mm -hmm. they know that over that weekend, most U.S. offices are going to be understaffed. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are going to be celebrating. So that's when they're going to make their move. Sneak. And they infected um, this product that Kaseya owns that basically what they did is they infected that product. And by infecting that product, it was a domino effect. So it's a supply chain attack. So when they get into that product, then because that product is spread around to all these different mm -hmm. customers of Kaseya, mm -hmm. and then those customers, some of them are MSPs, managed service providers, that then those guys have customers down their chain. So wow. it like people have estimated this as thousands of companies that have now been affected by this ransomware infection. Um, and you know, through their remote maintenance a product called um, VSA, I think if I'm getting that right. But anyway, they, this, you know, obviously this is a big deal. We're still, it's still a developing story at the time of this recording. They're trying to figure out what's going on, but um, that ransomware gang is, they're saying, hey, we will give a universal decryptor key if we're paid $70 million in crypto. Wow. Okay, so like I said, they're in it for the money. I don't know if this is going to be paid. Hopefully not, but um, that that does seem like oh, it's a nice solution, right? And I don't even know like who would pay that. <laughs> who would pay that amount? Like who has that? Who's going to like Kaseya doesn't probably have yeah. that. Um, I don't know much about the company Kaseya. I certainly hope they get everything back online um, and that their customers are able to keep moving forward. But think about how um, like awful of an attack this is. That basically a software solution that companies all across the country and beyond are relying on just to manage their software updates, um, their you know remote maintenance. Yeah. All of a sudden, that thing that's supposed to help them be protected is the thing that's actually the vehicle mm. for the infection. That's pretty rough. So anyway, that's that's why it's such a big deal, um, and that's what's going on. So anyway, that's that's my shortened version of it. If you want to look up more information, just go Google Kaseya, K-A-S-E-Y-A. And uh, that's the company. So. so I have the next story for you, and this is with Western Digital. Imagine, Ben, you wake up the next morning, all of your home videos are gone, all of your wedding photos are gone, and that is exactly what happened to Western Digital customers with their network-attached storage devices. Um, they were completely wiped, factory uh, resetted, and this was not, you know, in a case of ransom, the, they, they weren't asking for money. This was just for pure destruction, which is scary. And what happened is users started to log into their accounts. They had invalid passwords and they tried to reach out and it was just not letting them log in back into their accounts. So what happened is Western Digital told all our customers, hey, please, disconnect your devices from the network and that way, you know, this doesn't keep going on with your devices, so. Yeah, I actually have Western Digital drives, but luckily they're not network connected ones. So that makes a big difference because if you're going to connect to the cloud, which is a nice perk actually, yeah. because that way if like I'm traveling and I want to pull up like a, you know, a family video or something, I can do it. But the problem is when you connect to the cloud, you need to have extra security measures in place to make sure that's not 
you know, a vulnerable spot. And that's what the hackers did is what they they found the vulnerability. It wasn't it was unpatched and their last update was in 2015. So we need to add more security layers to their systems. Yeah, that's rough because I mean the thing you're depending on like your backup or home videos or whatever. And they're gone. gone. <laughs> they're gone. Wow. Okay, well, third story coming up right here. Okay, so call spoofing. Okay. Call spoofing is when someone impersonates a caller. So in other words, like you get a call that looks like it's local. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's got your area code in it and you answer it and it's like, oh no, it's some robo call or it's just, you know, some marketing call where it's, oh, we've been trying to reach you for extended warranty, you know, <laughs> that thing. Like that's called call spoofing when the number, it's, it's actually coming from maybe like overseas or whatever, but the number itself looks like it's local. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're more apt to actually answer mm -hmm. it. Okay, so we actually just passed a huge like landmark date in anti-call spoofing protocol, okay? So I'm gonna to try to walk you through this. This is what happened. The FCC um, set a deadline for all major US carriers to implement this anti-spoofing system. And that deadline was June 30th. Um, and what that actual protocol is called, it's called STIR slash SHAKEN, okay? Which is actually an acronym and it's a, it's, it's a mouthful. And I'm gonna to have to read it off here, but Obviously, someone was a big James Bond fan when they put this together, but here it is, okay? Stir slash shaken means this. Stick with me. Secure telephone identity revisited. That's the stir part. Here's the shaken part. Signature-based handling of asserted information using tokens. The K-E-N came from the token, so that was kind of a stretch. But anyway, stir shaken. Anyway, <laughs> the idea is this protocol protects networks from call spoofing, so you're getting an accurate caller ID. So it doesn't actually stop calls. It doesn't stop robocalls and doesn't stop them, but maybe we'll reduce them because they'll be less effective. I'm hoping that's the case. We're hoping that's the case. We all want less robocalls. Um, but all three major US carriers have now put this in place. They hit the deadline. So that's AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. That's taking place in all of them. And smaller carriers, unfortunately, if you don't have one of the three carriers, they their deadline is not until 2023. But wow. I know. The FCC is thinking about moving the deadline up, shortening the time span. And I hope they do. For our final story, I have a survey by Beyond Identity, and they found that one in four employees still have access to their accounts from previous jobs, mm. which is a no. That's a no. <laughs> and out of those 1,000 surveyed, more than 40% admitted that they shared passwords. And some of these passwords are used for personal banking. So if you have the password to that account, you also have the password to your banking information. Mm which is leaving the door open to hackers. Now businesses need to do a better job at control access, so that way employees don't have access to all of the information in their company. Don't do that. That's, that's not finishing strong, you gotta finish strong. Speaking of finishing strong, that is the news. Next time we'll have more cyber news. So, hope this is helpful. Now we have our top five outdoor speakers for the summer, and today we have Mandy here with me. Thanks, Elizabeth. I'll start us off on our list of the top five outdoor speakers. At number one, we have the JBL Boombox 2. This speaker was ranked best for overall qualities and retails for around $500. Now in the JBL family, we also have at number two, Pulse 4. This is the best speaker with LED lights, retails for $250. In our third spot on our list, we have the UE Megaboom 3. This speaker is waterproof and it floats, so it's great for poolside and it retails for around $150. You can find it on Amazon. Now in number four, we have the Bose SoundLink Revolve Series 3 speaker. Uh, this is best for 360 sound and it retails for only $200. And our last but definitely not least speaker on our list is the Soundcore Flare Mini. This speaker is our most portable and our most affordable speaker at only 43 bucks. And that's our Tech Rex for this episode. Next segment, we're gonna play, we're gonna play a game, okay? I hope you're ready for this. This is <laughs> password related, okay? We gotta have fun with cyber here and there because we got a lot of, you know, stuff that's Pretty serious. So anyway, what we're doing, th there's a company called Spec Ops, and they put together this list of password, like breached passwords, okay? So they took a cross section of breached, of recent breached passwords, and they looked to see what were the most popular 
um, comic book heroes and villains that were on this list. Okay. Okay. So what I want to do, and I don't need no peeking here, I want to see if you can guess they have a list of the top 40 Marvel and DC characters found within breached password lists. Okay. I want to see how many you can get in the top 10. Okay. okay. So these are DC and Marvel heroes and villains. Okay. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know how well you know your comic books, but most popular. And if you can get, I'll, I'll, I'll say you won this if you can get three. Okay. Three of the top ten. Awesome. Okay. I got so this. So I'm only going to give you ten guesses though. Okay? okay. Ten guesses. Okay. All right. Got it. First got? one. First one. Spider Man. Spider Man. Nope. Spider Man comes in at number fourteen. Mm, okay. Sorry. How about? Guess number two. Superman. Superman, yes, comes in at number seven on the list. All right, so I'll give you that one. You got one. One out of three. Okay. One for two. That's pretty good, actually. Okay, so. Iron Man? Iron Man, no. <laughs> Iron Man comes in right behind Spider-Man at number 15. Okay. Okay, so that's one for three. Then let's go with Thor. Oh, number two. Nice. Okay. All right. So you got two. Okay. That's what? Four guesses? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're, that's pretty <laughs> good. That's pretty good. All right. Okay. Next one is Batman. Oh, you got it. All right. Yeah. Batman comes in at number six. All right. So you hit your target of three. I will give you victory for that. But keep going. See how many you can get because that's what? Five guesses. You got five, five more okay. guesses. Let me just tell you, I am a big Marvel fan, so. <laughs> Should have known. Should have chosen a different challenge. Keep going. And once you get through 10 guesses, I'll give everyone the full top 10 top list. Top 10 list, okay. Um, let's go with. Captain America. No, he's not even close. He's my favorite. Maybe because Captain America is, is Kind of a longer one. It would have been stronger. <laughs> that's true. Good point. Okay, knowing that one, so that's what? You got three for six? Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep going, keep going. And this can also include villains, right? Yep, that's right. Thanos. Mm, no, I'm trying to see if he's in, in the top 40. He's oh, he is in the top 40, but okay. no, not nowhere close to the top 10. And. Gru? No. Not Gru. Okay. How many guesses is that? Nine, I believe. Oh, okay. So I have one more. <laughs> I can't peek. Don't look. <laughs> I saw that. Okay. Last one is going to be Flash. Oh, yep. Flash comes in at number five. Well done. So that's what, how many did you get? Five for 10 or four for 10? I have no clue, but I know I won. <laughs> Somewhere there. Give me victory. Okay. So here are the top 10, the top 10 from the list of uh, Marvel and DC characters found within breach passwords. Loki is number one. <gasps> Loki. And that's probably because the Disney Plus series Loki right now. Let me oh, okay. So Loki was number one. Number two was Thor, which you got. Okay. Number three, this one's surprising to me, was Robin. 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 What's Robinson? Yeah. <laughs> Robin's on there. Number four, Joker. Oh, yeah. Number five, Flash, which you got. Number six, Batman, which I think you guessed. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Superman. Mm -hmm. Number eight, Vision. Vision. Okay, which, there's again, another Disney. Uh, there's another mm -hmm. Disney Plus TV series. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine, Falcon. There's the Falcon yeah. Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And then finally, this one may have been the most surprising to me at all. Number 10 was Penguin. <laughs> and maybe just because it's also just an animal, but Penguin was number 10. Wow. Um, so, yep, there's your list. Uh, if you want to see the full list, you can go to Spec Ops and find that on their blog. But anyway, I thought that was fun. Good work. Thank you. Victory. <laughs> Websites of the week. I actually have two. 
All right. This time around. More than one. Okay. I have one that's like an actually good website. Like a, okay. like a website that you or your friends or family or okay. whoever <laughs> can use. It will be useful. The other one is not super useful, but still it, it needs recognition because I think it's brilliant. All right. So first okay. one, we'll start mm -hmm. with a serious one, is this. It's the Mozilla, these are the guys that built Firefox, if mm -hmm. you're familiar with them. Mozilla um, list, it's a, it's called Privacy Not Included. Okay. So the URL, we'll put it on the screen, foundation.mozilla.org, um, and you can go from there and find Privacy Not Included, or you can just Google Privacy Not Included. This is a great list, so like Internet of Things devices, so Amazon Echoes, um, all these devices now that are connected um, okay. to the internet, you can go like IOT stuff, you can go and look and see how creepy are these devices based on privacy settings that they have. So okay. um, it's kind of cool because you can scroll through um, the different devices and see like, oh, I'm thinking about, you know, buying, you know, uh, AirPods or whatever. And I want to see, oh, well, how like this doorbell, you know, how much okay. like privacy is actually built in to the device itself because IoT stuff is is a full spectrum, right? Some companies, they spend a lot of time and money and resources making sure it's got really good privacy settings and others, not so much. So you want to know. So check out the Mozilla Privacy Not Included site. I think it's really, really helpful. They built it around the holiday season, I think a year or two ago, but they updated okay. with new devices. So check it out. It's really good. The other one is Number two. called mm. How many people are in space right now? Dot com. And I it love literally that. tells you <laughs> real time how many people are in fact in space. So, how many do you think are in space right now? People in space? Yes. If you had to take a guess. If I had to guess, I would guess seven. Seven, seven people. Your guess is low as 10. 10. So, you go to the site and close. literally you scroll down. So, first of all, it's just a big number. So it's 10 people in space right now. And you scroll down and you can see how many, you know, like how many American astronauts. How many cosmonauts? Um, you know, here's a French, you know, tells guy. You been, it everything. tells you their names, the country they come from, and how many days they've been in days space. Days in space. So there you go. How many people are in space right now? That is really cool. Com. That's a good one. That's all I got. I'm going to share that with my friends. <laughs> awesome. Do it. Hey, everybody. I'm wearing a fish head, and that is because I'm going to tell you about recent fishing tactics you need to be on the lookout for, and that is DocuSign and SharePoint. Um, researchers have seen in recent days um, a lot of phishing emails impersonating communications coming from DocuSign and SharePoint. So if you use one of these tools or both of them, be on the lookout. Make sure you're not going to fall for a fish. Don't click. Don't take the bait and we will see you on the next Cyber Show.